Hello, God bless you. You are welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of the Prophetic Hour. We bless the holy name of God. The God we are serving is a mighty God. And this God begins to work His wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. We thank God for the grace He's given to us to be here again in His presence. Thank you very much for all those who have been waiting for us to come on board. We really appreciate you. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for everything. God will bless, increase and prosper you. We do appreciate you all and God will increase and prosper you. Make you flourish mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. This is another edition of the Prophetic Hour where you will all receive words that will encourage your soul and lift up your spirit. Words that will encourage your soul and lift up your spirit. Guess what? You are not watching by accident, but by divine appointment. I know that divinely, the Lord will prove himself like never before in all your lives in the name of Jesus. So you are all welcome, welcome on board. God will bless and increase and prosper you. My name is Chris, Pastor Chris of Body of Christ Center, a church I pass and my wife is a church where Christ himself reigns supreme and lives are touched and changed and transformed. And Pastor Fagan and myself, we are taking this opportunity to invite you to church. That is our church address on the screen, as you can see. That's our church address. Write it down, come to church on Sunday, at 10 a.m., I tell you, your life shall never remain the same again. This God we are serving is a mighty God, and God will begin to do a great work and a mighty work. So that is the church address. 10 o'clock on Sunday, come, I tell you, God will work wonders. Church has started right now, and God will work wonders and miracles, even in all your lives and destinies, in the name of Jesus. And if you want to know more about Pastor Fakon and myself, you can go to our website. That's it on the screen. That is our website on the screen. You can go to our website. Tells you everything you need to know about myself, Pastor Funke, the church, about all our programs, details, address, how to get to church. It's all there on the website, and God will bless, increase, and prosper. So you are all welcome to this edition of the Prophetic Hour, where God will give us words that will encourage our soul and lift up our spirits. That will encourage our souls and lift up our spirit. And also, don't forget that this program airs every Thursday. It airs every Thursday, every, sorry, every Tuesday, every Tuesday at 9 p.m. That's it on the screen. Every Tuesday at 9 p.m. That's UK time, and God will bless, increase, and prosper you. We are so happy and glad you are able to connect with us today, and we know that Jehovah God will begin to do a great work and a mighty work, even in every life in the name of Jesus. And please don't forget, we are on two platforms today. We are on two platforms today. We are on Facebook. That is our Facebook address. All those who are joining us on Facebook, please kindly, kindly, kindly share. Share within your timeline. Very important. Share um, 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 within the groups you belong to and share on your Facebook page. Just share on your timeline. Share on your Facebook page and share also amongst the groups that you belong to. And God will begin to work His wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. You will begin to arise and shine, prosper and succeed in the name of Jesus. And I also thank those who are watching behind the scene. There are many who are watching behind the scene. Thank you, thank you very much for watching. God will bless, increase and prosper you. Even though you don't make a combine that one way or the other, you are being blessed. So we do appreciate you all for those on the scene and those behind the scene and those through the scene and whatever doing with the same God will bless you, increase and prosper you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. You will continue to arise and shine. So we appreciate you all. Thank you very much. God will bless, increase and prosper you. God will honor you. He will grant you all your heart desire in the name of Jesus. Also on YouTube, that is our YouTube address. You know, you can send the links to your friends. The same links we send to you on your WhatsApp. You can send it to your friends and God will bless you. Let them join in. No, they don't need to have a, a, a Facebook account or YouTube account. Just tell them to click on the link that we send to you and you send to them and they will to watch it. If it's on Facebook, just press the X and remove the login in details and scroll down and you press on live. You can connect with us online. The only thing is they will not be able to leave a comment. And also on YouTube, the same thing also. You can join us on YouTube through the same link. If you do, if you're not, if you don't have an account, you can still watch the program. The only thing you'll not be able to leave a comment. So God will bless you. We can see both comments on we can see comments on both platforms on YouTube and Facebook and God will bless you in Jesus. So you are all welcome, welcome, welcome. God will bless in Jesus and prosper you. God will honor you. God will favor you. The plan of God shall come to pass even in your lives in the name of Jesus. So I just want to quickly mention before we pray, quickly mention those who are sharer. Make sure you are a sharer. Sister Olam woman, you are a sharer. God bless you. I can see here. I know Facebook will let you know on top. And um, 
sister Mag Mag Cleo. God bless you, Ashera. I'm just looking at those who are sharers here. That's that's what I can see. Those who are, I know that everybody is a sharer, but God will bless you. And those who are top fans too, you are all welcome. Please let's share, share, share. Let's send it as far and as wide as possible. And God will bless, increase, and prosper you. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you, we bless you. We give you all the praise, glory, honor, marvelous King, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you for giving us the grace to be here again in your presence where there's fullness of joy. We bless you, we worship you, we praise you, we adore you, we honor you because there's no lack unto you, there's none besides you, there's none we can compare unto you. Thank you, marvelous King El Shaddai, Jehovah Nessie, for keeping watch over us from the beginning of this year up till now. Mighty Father, we bless your holy name, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Every sin, Lord, forgive in Jesus' name. Send your power into our midst in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, take control of the program. Have your way, prove yourself. Let your name be glorified. We come against every evil work of the enemy in the air, in the sky, in the moon, in the sun, and the water. We bind them. We cast them to hell in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, begin to have your way. Come down with your fire. Come down with your power. Come down with your glory. Trot every viewer. Touch every soul. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be honored. Let your name be praised. Let your name be adored. Mighty Father, have your way. Bless every viewer, Lord. Meet us at the very point of our need. And let your name be glorified. Father, we honor and we bless you. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name. We pray. So you are all welcome. We do appreciate you all. God will bless, increase, and prosper you. God will make you flourish. You're going to arise and shine. You're going to succeed and prosper right now in the name of Jesus. So you are all welcome, welcome, welcome. God will bless you in the name of Jesus. I want us to go into the word of God. But before then, guess what? God is decorating somebody's life. Do you know what I see? I see a comb combing a man's hair. And I see a hand repairing and dressing a woman's hair. I said, what is this, God? And God says that on the program today, it's going to begin to work on destinies and repair destinies and put destinies in order. Now, you, you will determine what you want God to do for you. Either repair or replace or, 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 or put your destiny in order. Whatever I want God to do to your destiny right now, I see that hand. As I begin to declare it, I see God repairing destinies. I see God uh, replacing destinies. I see God um, um, glorifying destinies. I see God raising destiny. Whatever I want God to do regarding your destiny, type it out. My destiny, whether I rise and shine, my destiny begin to glow, my destiny move forward, my destiny not stand and see. As you begin to declare it, guess what? God will bring it to pass. So whatever I want God to do regarding your destiny today, right now on this program, begin to declare it and the glory of God will bring it to pass right now in the name of God. I see that angel repairing heads. Oh Lord, my own destiny. Let it begin to shine, arise and shine and move forward and make progress. I am saying my own, say your own, type your own. You know in this program, you have to type it. You cannot say, if you say I'm not here. So you need to type it and as you type it, the Lord himself will begin to work his wonders and miracles even in your lives in Jesus' name. I also welcome Sister Benny and Sister Baker on 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 on, on YouTube, God will bless you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. I see God still repairing heads. Even there's a head that I see that, you know, it's a lady's head. I see it being washed and cleansed. The hair is being washed and cleansed. And then it's been dried and it's been, that is, that, that destiny has been let down, has been battered, has been, but God is now, you know, you know a woman's hair, when it's so rough, and I see that it needs, a, that it needs washing that hair, it's washed, it's cleansed, it's dried, it's, it's, a, it's, it's done, and I see the hand working on it to make it shine, putting spray and all that. And that is total overhauling of that destiny. I heard that word, total overhauling of that destiny. Total overhauling of that destiny. And I hear God say, he has overhauled totally that destiny. That destiny was not going anywhere. But because you are watching, God has overhauled your destiny. And guess what? We are moving forward. We are making progress right now in the name of Jesus. Now, let's get as many people as possible on board. Let's invite all of our friends. Share, share, share. And that's the important thing. Share, share, share. God will begin to work his wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies. And guess what? You begin to make progress. Progress. I say you begin to make progress. I say you be, what's going to show me now? It's so funny. I see somebody smile open on a, the chair of a dentist, and I see that there's a tooth there that is causing pain. Even though all the teeth are okay, but
but then that little tooth that is causing pain and I see the dentist put doing all the things and getting the plier, I don't know what they call it, like plier, and removing that tooth and that tooth has been removed and the person was relieved and I said, what is this God? Does it mean that we have to go and meet a dentist to remove our tooth or teeth or what? And God says no. And God says that there is somebody watching, there is a, a, a challenge that is disturbing every good thing in your life. There's a challenge disturbing every good thing in that's just as that tooth was, even though all the teeth was okay, that was, but that little tooth that was aching caused so much pain that the person could not even chew or bite or do anything, but it was removed and the person was relieved. And God said that challenge has been removed. If it is you, God said the challenge has been removed. The trials and tribulation has been removed. The error has been removed. Whatever you want God to remove, it is a great pain, but I see the power of God removing it. Whatever has caused you pain, whatever has caused you sorrow, whatever has caused you to weep or to be uneasy. God says he has removed it. He has removed it by his fire. God has removed it by his fire. Thank you, Lord. Lord, continue to have your way. Let your name be glorified, honored, and praised. We adore you. We bless you. worship you because you are the Lord. There is none like unto. So welcome once again to this edition, part 13. Can you imagine part 13? That's 13 weeks. Thank God for his goodness. We have been coming all the way from part 1 to part 13. Today is part 13 of Right Direction in our series, Supernatural Intervention Series. Series. I know that God would supernaturally intervene in your life like never before. Now, if you have missed any of the parts, don't worry. When you go to our Facebook page, as you can see on the screen, or not now, when we finish, when you go to our Facebook page or you go to our YouTube channel, you can just click on, for YouTube, click on playlist and go down to Right Direction and click on it. You will see parts 1 to 12 there. If you go to our YouTube or Facebook or so click on videos, you see right direction, you will be able to watch parts 1 to 12 also on it and God will bless you. So you can follow up us, you can follow us as we are doing it and God will bless, increase and prosper you. Lord, have your way. Begin to work your wonders in every life. Lord, I destroy every form of stroke in any life. Whoever is watching me, I declare, you shall not have stroke. I come against the stroke that anyone wants to strike your life with. I destroy it by the power in the blood of Jesus. I destroy that stroke. I demolish it in the name of Jesus. Either physical or in your endeavors or in your marriage, there shall be no stroke. Now, if you want, if you want God to cancel any form of stroke, stroke is not only that he's the body and one part of the body, but also stroke affects marriages, it affects finances, it affects people's destiny. The Lord no stroke in my life, no stroke in my destiny, no stroke in my endeavors. Just that no stroke, no stroke, no stroke, no stroke. As I begin to have no stroke, God will put a full stop to every form of stroke in any life and any destiny. So as I said, stroke is not only sickness, it's not only the one that makes people's left hand or right hand or right part become numb. No, this is a stroke also that is spiritual, that it strikes people's marriages, it strikes people's finances, it strikes people's destinies. But now, if you want, if you want the Lord to return him back to sender. Just stop it at no stroke. And God himself will begin to work his wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we worship you. Father, we praise you. Father, we adore you. Father, we adore honor you. Father, begin to have your way. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be honored. Let your name be praised. Thank you, Lord. There's somebody that God is telling me, Many times when you are dream, you are always looking for something. You are always looking for something. And 90% of the time, by the time you wake up, you don't find that thing. You have been looking for something. Every time you have a dream, the ones you remember, you remember that you are looking for something. You are looking for something. In your dream, you begin to go helter skelter, run up and down, go to places. And despite all your effort in your dream, you are not finding whatever you are looking for. And I begin to ask, what is this? And God says that, Hmm. there's something that you need in your life that will move you forward. But the enemy has kept it from you. There's something in your life that you need that you move it forward. And that's why each time you are looking for it and you don't find it. But I hear God say very loud and clear, it has been found. It has been found. And God is saying to tell that individual, from now on, your life will be moving forward and making progress. That thing is what you, just like somebody having a beautiful house and not having a key into it. No matter how the house is beautiful, no matter how beautiful the house is, no matter how what stories it may have, if you don't have the key to enter, you may not enter. So this is like a key 
to somebody's destiny. Now, if that is you, just type it out. It has been found. It has been found. It has been found. And God begin to work His wonders and miracles even in every life and destinies in the name of Jesus. Now, as we go into the Word of God, God will begin to work His wonders and miracles even in every life in the name of Jesus. So, once again, you are welcome to... Um, um, prophetic hour where you receive words that will encourage your soul and lift up your spirit. Words that will encourage your soul and lift up your spirit. God is saying so much today. I believe it's going to be very prophetic. I hear God say, Take off the garment of shame. I hear that voice laugh from me. Take off the garment of shame. I heard again, Take off the garment of shame. So, Lord, who is this? And God says that there's some people watching. I, I see five people, five, five, two men and three women. I see five people. Three women and two men. I see five people, apart from others, that the enemy put a clothing of shame on. And I hear the word of I hear God saying louder, take off the garment of shame. And I began to ask that Lord, people who are putting this, they don't know. And God is saying is commanding his angel to take it off those five people. The clothing of shame has been taken off. If that is you, tap it out. The clothing or garment of shame has been taken off. It has been taken off. The garment of shame or the clothing of shame has been taken off. Whatever is causing shame in your life and destiny, God says he has removed it by fire. Whatever is causing shame, shame in your life and destiny has been removed by fire. I say once again, whatever is causing shame in your life has been removed by fire. It has been removed. Just type that. Every garment of shame has been removed. And God will begin to work his wonders and miracles even in lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to God. We bless his holy name. Please let's get as many people as possible on board. Let's invite all our friends. Let's call them from the north, from the south, from the west, from the east, from far, from near. I believe that God wants to do a great work even in every life in Jesus' name. I believe that the Lord wants to do a great and mighty work even in every life and destiny in Jesus' name. And this second will begin to do a great work and a mighty work for you and for me and for everyone in the name of Jesus. So put your mind at rest. Jesus is in control and this is going to begin to work his wonders and miracles even in every life and destinies in the name of Jesus. Our life shall never remain the same again and this God will do a great work and a mighty work for us and in us in the name of Jesus. He will do a great work for you and I in the name of Jesus. By the grace and by the power of God, it is well with our soul. It is well with our soul. It is well with our soul. And I know that God will begin to work wonders and miracles even in our lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is well with us. I know that God will begin to do His great work and mighty work. So if you have your Bibles, let's open our Bibles to the book of... The book of... Thank you. Let's open our Bibles to the book of John chapter 5, verses 1 to 9. John chapter 5, verses 1 to 9. John chapter 5 verses 1 to 9. Thank you, Lord. Mm. There's somebody you are watching. You are watching. You are watching. You are watching. There's somebody you are watching. There's somebody that you are watching. You have a dream. You always, every now and then, see yourself back at school or in an examination hall. Back at school or in an examination hall. And I hear God say, and I see the person that you don't complete the exam. You sometimes you wonder, why am I, why am I at this age? Why, why am I going back to primary school? Why am I doing there? But I hear God say, every spirit of backwardness is destroyed. Every spirit of backwardness is destroyed. There's some people you know in your life that 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 that, that it's as if there's more reverse gear in your life than forward gear. You know, a car has a reverse gear, and reverse gear is only one. And forward gear is about five or six, some new cars, eight gears, in a sign it's automatic. And you begin to wonder, but in that in those people's this people's lives, there are like four or five reverse gears and 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 uh, one forward gear. And many times they are going backwards instead of forward. And I hear God say that today backwardness ends. Today backwardness ends. Today no more backwardness. Today, no more backwardness. Now, if that is you, tap it out. Forward ever, backward never. Forward ever, backward never. Forward ever, forward ever, backward never. Very important. 
tap it out because God wants to put a stop to every spirit of backwardness in your life. God wants to put a stop to every spirit of stagnancy in your life. God wants to put a stop to every power that is making you back to square one, that's making you uh, be in the same place. God wants to put a stop to it and God will begin to put a stop to it even mightily and marvelously in your lives and destinies. In your life. Guess what? Tell them back and uh, forward ever, backward never. Forward ever backward never and God will begin to work his wonders in your life the book of John chapter 5 the book of John I believe you have it already the book of John thanks for those who have put it on the screen the book of John chapter 5 John chapter 5 verses 1 to 9 John chapter 5 verses 1 to 9 this God is working wonders and miracles. I want to go into the word of God. God is, saying, God is saying so much, so much. There's somebody you are watching, you are having air pain. Sometimes pause comes out of the air. I see the hand of God touching it, touching it. After this program, get olive oil, call him on Jesus three times and touch another the ears. Do that for three days. Another the ears for three days. Another the ears for three days, it will go. And if that is you, tap it out. No more air pain. No more air pain. No more air pain. No more air pain. That pain, that air pain will stop. No more air pain. No more air pain. God begin to work His wonders and miracles even in your lives. And let's go into the Word of God. I'm so eager to go into the Word of God. And that God is saying so much. And I know that, you know what? We shall arise and shine in the name of I see somebody, some, that person is putting on old shoes. Old shoes. The shoes are very, very old has holes in it. I haven't seen such shoes uh, um, for a long time. It's only in Africa such as whereby the shoes will have holes, the front will open, and like that. That's the type of shoe the person is wearing. And the person is moving out with those shoes. But I see a man, that's the angel of God, stopping the man, is a man, stopping the individual and changing the shoes. Changing the shoes and putting new shoes on. And I said, what is this? And God says that he's going to give this individual new territory to conquer. New places to go to. The place that this individual could not go to. This person is going there. If that is you, tap it out. I receive my new shoes. 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 And I said, tap that out. Guess what? God will change those old, sh old shoes the enemy has given to you in the future. Life and put on new shoes. And once you put on the shoes, guess what? You begin to possess your possession. You begin to take territories. And you begin to command victory. Th things you could not achieve before, you begin to achieve it even right now in the name of of Jesus. Now, the book of John, let's go to the word of God. The book of John, the book of John, chapter 5, book of John, chapter 5, verses 1 to 2. I'll read that first before we go on. And the Bible says, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethsaida, having five particles. In these, lay a multitude, a great multitude of important folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. And the Bible says in verse 4, For an angel of the Lord came down at certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Verses, um, verses 5 and 6. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie there and knew that he had been now a long time in this case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me to put to put me into the pool. But while I am coming down, another step it is down before me. Father, we thank, we bless, we worship, we praise, we adore you. We give you all the praise, glory, honor. Mighty Father, as I go into your word, go with us, speak to us. Let your name be glorified, honored, and praised. Come to have your way in our lives in Jesus' name. Open our understanding and let your name be glorified. Father, we honor and we bless you. We praise and we adore you. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Tell yourself, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. As I was praying just now, I saw a big well. 
I saw a big well, and I saw people bringing their cups to take water from the well. And I'm saying, what's type of what is this well? And God says, this is the well of peace and comfort. This is the well of peace and comfort that everyone that wants well, that wants peace and comfort should tap it. I should declare peace and comfort. And God says He will give them water out of that well, the well of peace and comfort, the well of peace and comfort. Now, if you want peace and comfort, just tap it out. Peace and comfort. And once you tap that out, guess what? God will give you from the well of peace and comfort. And peace and comfort will be your portion even right now, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus. I say once again, the the from the well of comfort and peace, peace and comfort shall be our portion right now in the name of Jesus. Now I want to go into the word of God. We have been talking about supernatural supernatural intervention series where God intervenes intervenes supernaturally. Jesus Christ intervenes supernaturally. And you're talking about the right direction. It's always important for you and I to go or face the right direction. I'm going to speed up on what you have been doing so far. Like I said, this is part 13. And we want to talk about the steps that you and I need to take to enter or go into right direction. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> There's somebody watching, one particular person. I see the person's leg hooked in a trap. And because, it, you know, when an animal, is the leg is caught in a trap, the animal will not be able to go. It may cry, it may scream, it may do all that. As long as, it held, as, long as the leg is being held in that trap, it cannot go anywhere. And there's an individual that in the spiritual realm, their legs have been caught in a trap. But God says, it is not time for release. These people whose legs have been caught in a trap, things around them don't work. They see things. They have great visions, great dreams, great goals. They see things. They know things. But yet, their life is not changing. They know things. They see things. They are very brilliant. And yet, it makes no difference in their lives. They have good results. They are moving forward. They, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they have things to move forward. Yet, their lives are not no difference in their life Why? because their legs are caught fast in the trap of the enemy. But I hear God say it is time for them to be released. I hear God say it, and I see that trap being opened, unlocked, and the leg was removed, and the person began to move forward and make progress. If that is you, tap it out. I am released by fire. I am released by fire. I am. That's why I gave examples or scenarios of things that happen to people who are entrapped by the enemy. If that is you, just tap it out. I am released by fire. 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 And guess what? You are released by fire, by fire, by fire in the name of No matter what has been holding you down, no matter how long it has been holding you down, no matter the, the trap the enemy has used to hold you down, guess what? You are released by fire. And the fire of God has released you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, right direction. Now, right direction. the steps we need to take as we talk about right direction. Number one, Number one, number one, after this, there's always, as I said, I'm going to rush through this. If you've missed any of it, don't worry, go to our YouTube or Facebook page and then you can watch and you can listen and God will bless you. Number two, number two, celebration. You shall be celebrated in the name of Jesus. Number three, Go up. We need to go up. As you go up, I declare as you go up, as you arise, you begin to shine and make it in the name of Jesus. Number four, talking about steps that you and I, that will take us to the right direction. Number four, your discovery. As you go up to Jerusalem, what is your discovery? All these points are taken from the book of John, chapter 5, verses 1 to 9. Number five, number five, number five, no exceptions. There is no one that is exempted from any challenge of life. So don't let anyone deceive you. I will pray for you. God will deliver you from all your problems and you have no problem anymore. There is no one who is problem free. The word of God says in this world you have tribulation but be of good cheer because I the Lord has overcome the world. So has overcome the world for you and I. That's what Paul says. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So the strength to overcome all the Lord will give it to us in Jesus name. And then number six I believe 
Number six, certain season. There's always a season. I declare because you are watching, your season has come even right now in the name of Jesus. Ask the council again. Because you are watching, your season has come right now in the name of Jesus. Number seven, your angel. Your angel. There's always an angel. When last, each time I talk about this angel, I ask you, when last did you send your angel on assignment? When last did you send your angel on assignment? We need to send our angels on assignment every time and God will bless, increase and prosper everyone. Even right now, in the name of Jesus, the glory of God will begin to shine even in our lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. And number eight, number eight, we spoke about the troubler, the troubler. I believe that all our troublers have been destroyed now. The troubler, the troubler of our destiny. Whoever is the troubler of our destiny, they are destroyed by fire in the name of Jesus. And number nine, number nine, we spoke about progress report. What is your progress report? You know, we are in the eighth month of this year. COVID or no COVID, we have no excuse. We need to have, we must have a progress report whereby we can thank God alone. Thus, you have helped me so far. I've been able to achieve this and that. If that is not your case, then it's not too late for you. Start today. Start today. We are in the eighth month. Before you know it, you begin to shout Happy New Year. So we need the remaining four months. Or how many months do we have? September, October, November, December. Yes. We need the remaining four months. Guess what? You must act and have a progress report. Very important. And God will bless us in the name of Jesus. Number 10, yastic for a miracle. There's no yastic for a miracle. All we are believing God is for a miracle, and miracle shall be our portion in the name of Jesus. Number 11, you need to fight for your destiny. You, need to, you and I, we need to fight for our destiny. As we begin to fight our destiny, guess what? The Lord will begin to work His wonders and miracles, even in our lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. You and I, we need to fight for our destiny. Are you ready to fight for your destiny? And then number... Number 12, number 12, yes, number 12, divine location. Right where you are, the Lord will divinely locate you. You know, as I said last week, I did not know what those people were looking at. There were multitudes there, and guess what? Jesus entered, hid that man, and left. May we not miss our opportunity. May we not miss our time. May we not be outside our time. We'll be inside our time. I will be within my time. I'll be inside my time and I'll make progress and success. Because we need to act when it is our time. The grace to act when it's our time, the Lord will give to us in Jesus. And today, 13, today, today, we want to talk about the right response. Right response to success right response to breakthrough, right response to when God is giving us instruction, the response that we, that, we, that we have when things are about to take place in our lives. Now, the Word of God, in the Word of God, in John chapter 5, verses 5, verses 6 and 7, John chapter 5, 6 and 7, the Bible says, when Jesus saw him lie, I knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He said unto him, Will thou be made whole? Number verse 7. Now the man answered. The important man answered, Sir, I have no man. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. Father, we thank you. As I'm going to God, we just speak to us. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. I have no man. Now, the question is do you want to be made whole? The question is that do you want to succeed in life? When somebody asks you, do you want to succeed in life? Don't begin story that ah in the village I come out from, hmm, they are very powerful, they are very wicked. Oh, the dreams I've been having, ah, their parents suffered. So they know what that is not the question. That, do you want to succeed? They just ask this man, do you want to be healed? Very simple. Talking about right response. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? Now, in this type, in this area we're talking about, you are either three things, and I want you to answer which one you are. You are number one, as this man, you are either a storyteller. This man was a storyteller. He was telling a story of, Lord, I have been here for a long time. You see, Lord, when the water has been moved, nobody helps me. You see, Lord, everybody goes ahead of me. You see, Lord, I have been here for a long time. Is that the question? Is that the answer to the question? Do you want to be made whole? 
Simple, yes, so they want to be made whole. No, the man began to answer, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. I have no man. Now, you say he has no man. Are you a storyteller? Or are you a time waster? Because this guy became a time waster. He was telling us to thank God that Jesus did not was not moved by his storytelling and time waster. So are you a storyteller? Are you a time waster? Or are you someone that goes straight to the point? You are somebody that goes straight to the point. You are either of these three things. You are, somebody is either a storyteller or a time waster. Or you are somebody that goes straight to the point. Somebody that goes straight to the... Let me repeat that. You will say which one you are. I don't know you, know yourself. Being truthful to yourself. You are either a storyteller, a time waster, or somebody that goes straight to the point. You know, we as pastors, we cancel a lot of people. We, I have noticed that some people, they just want to, want to tell you their challenge. They are good storytellers. They want to tell you their challenge. Oh, they have been married. Oh, they have been disappointed. And when you begin to say, let us pray, and they will begin to say, and you know what, somebody has prayed for me. I just wanted to know. And they, they, they're, not, they're not even interested in prayer. All they want to do is become a storyteller. Just as this man, will thou be made whole? What is your response? Simple question. Now, do you want to be healed? Simple question. Do you want to marry? Don't begin to say yes. Don't, the answer is like, yes. Don't begin to say, ah, you don't know my story. Hey, they have been disappointed three, four times. They can even count. Uh, they can tell you from the beginning to the end. Do you have time? Don't be a time waster. There are some people who are time wasters. Don't spend your time with time wasters. They are storytellers. They will tell you story from A to Z. They will tell you that 10 years ago, they wanted to do something. And 5 years ago, this happened. And now, COVID came in. And they are excused because they are time wasters. Don't spend your time with time wasters. Somebody tap, it, tap, tap that out. Don't spend your time with time wasters. Time wasters will come and waste your time. They will tell you things. And after they have gone, you begin to wonder. What did this person say? No head or tail. Look at this man. What he said? No head or tail. Do you want to be made whole? What was the what should have been the right response? Yes, I want to be made whole. But this guy became a time waster. He became a storyteller. Which one are you? Are you somebody that goes straight to the point that hits the nail on the head? When God told Abraham, God called Abraham, leave your father, leave your country and your kindred and your father's house and go to a land that I will show you. He didn't begin to query God. Lord, with direction? Hmm. Lord, I don't have a compass. I don't have direction. I don't know where to go. But he moved in that direction. And the right direction he moved in was the right direction. He not query. God does not have time for time wasters. God does not have time for storytellers. God will focus on those who are, are focused in moving forward. Who go straight to the point. Who don't query your question. But move to the point. What is the right response? That is according to them. Do you give the right response? Are you acting with the right response? Response. Are you doing things that moves you forward or are you somebody that is very meticulous? You want to know the A and the B and the C and the D and the Z and the Y. You want to know the S and the W. You want to know the K and the Y. No. Make sure. What is your rest? Do you want to be healed? Simple. Yes, I want to be healed. Do you want to get married? I don't know my story. Yes, I want to get married. Do you want to be healed? Yes, I want to be healed. Do you want a child? Ah, hmm. Man of God, woman of God, hey, if you know the, the number, the, the, if you know how much I spent on IVF, ah, you will not know. If you know more, how much, uh, uh, if you know the number of miscarriages I've had, that is not the question. Do you want a baby? Yes, I want a baby. That is the, that's the right response. Don't become a storyteller. Don't become a time. There are many time wasters here. And you see, in this world, and that's why, don't be part of that time wasters. Don't be part of the people who don't have the right response regarding every, any situation. You must move with people who have. You see that those people who are smart, once they throw the question, they have the right response. They have the right response. And when God throws the question, he wants you to have the right response. Look at Jonah. Jonah had the wrong response. Go to Nineveh. Go and preach to them. Tell them I am not happy with them. And he took a U-turn and he went somewhere. He went to a boat and he was thrown into the sea. And for three days, he was in the belly of a big fish. Whether he will, we don't know. But in the belly of a big fish. But he suffered for it. Why? Because his response was negative 
to the answer to to the request that God gave to him. He wanted to go his own own way. That is why you see we need to respond to God in a positive. When God says go, don't query. Say Lord, I am going. When God says move, don't query. I am moving. When God says the right direction, say yes. Say, yes, I am moving in the right. Direction. Don't become a storyteller. You know, even Moses was almost becoming a time waster. When God has given him all the things, he gave, gave him the water of the nine, he gave him the rod, he gave him his hand in the pit. Now, he said, Lord, send someone. The Bible said, God was wrought with him. And God said, what do you mean? I cannot talk. God said, who gives the speech? Who makes the speech? Who makes all this? Who makes it to be clear? And in the end, he went. thank God he went. God would have destroyed him there and then. The right response is very, very important in the things that you and I do. Do you have the right response? Do you have the right attitude? Do you have the right mind? Do you have the right thought? Do you have the right thing? Stop spending your, wasting your time with time wasters. Not spending, you don't spend time with, you waste time with time wasters. There's some people who love story. They can tell story. They can tell story. They can tell story. I told our church that there was a time I was traveling. I was traveling to a beautiful country. And on two occasions, this happened to me. I told myself, never ever. I am not moving with time wasters. When I sit down, I sat in the plane. There was somebody next to me. We began to talk. And we spoke and spoke. And we spoke and spoke. And in the end, they gave me their phone number. And the phone did not work. One. Two again. I went, this, this is the same thing. Do you know what I do now? I told myself, I will never waste my time with time wasters on the plane. As soon as I sit down, I put headphones, boom, in my ears. I'm li- I am not listening to anybody talking because, you see, time wasters will just waste your time. They will just tell you stories and there's nothing to be gained from it. That's why don't allow time wasters to make your life just move, go away. Right response. What is the right response? What is the right response? Now, you are in a challenge. Do you know the right response will bring you out of that challenge? If God says, seek my face, and you seek the face of God, guess what? You will come out of that challenge. Look at the man who was born blind. Christ made a spittle with the sand and put it on his eyes and said, go to River Shiloam and walk. The man could have said that, Lord Jesus, are you serious? Are you serious? Do you know he's blind? Do you know he cannot see? But this man found somebody that would trust him, that would take him to River Shiloam. He had to find his way. And that was his right response. And because he went and responded well, what happened? He came back seen because he had the right response. He went straight to the point. He wasn't a time waster. There are many time wasters out there. Look, 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 look. COVID has wasted so much time. Three months, four months. Do you, would you allow somebody else to waste your time? It's time for you to move on. Before you know it, 2020 would be over. The right response, right attitude takes you far in your life. Stop wasting your time. Jesus had so much to do. He had places to go to. He had Because when you see, after Jesus had healed the man, he went around and just found him in the temple. So Jesus was a very busy man. He did not allow this man to waste his time. He, not, he did not entertain this man with storytelling. That's why nowadays, when I'm canceling, I don't entertain storytelling. Don't tell me your story. Your story is not what I want to hear. The Lord knows your story. Just Lord, my man of God, man of God, pray for me. This is what I want. And guess what? Once you pray, the Lord will make a way for you. Prayer is the key. Stop wasting time. Some people like wasting time. That's why Jesus said that. People think that when they pray, when they pray, when they pray, when they heap up empty phrases, they think they will be hard because of the length of their prayer. Your length of prayer. I'm not saying pray short or long prayer. <coughs> Don't get me wrong. <coughs> Excuse me. But have meaningful points in your prayer. You don't pray that, Lord, and look at me. Can you imagine, Lord, somebody came to London after me. They have a car now. They have a house. And, uh, Lord, look at them. No car, no house, no marriage. Lord, are you just looking? That's no prayer. That's complaining. But what do you say? Lord, answer me. Lord, make a way for me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, let me have a testimony. Straight, straight to the point. God is not, in, God is not interested in prayer of complaints. Some people pay prayer of complaint. Look, look at that person. Just as the man that the, the Bible says that Jesus said that they went to the temple and they and the Pharisee beat, uh, looked up and, and looked and said, Lord, I'm happy. 
I'm glad. I'm a righteous man. I fast. I pay my tithe. I'm not like this tax collector uh, that is a sinner. Lord, I'm this and that. He began to heap up empty phrases, thinking that it would be hard. But the other tax collector went, that, Lord, hmm, I'm a sinner. Save me. He could not look up. But he looked down, Lord, save me, deliver me, because he had the right response. And Jesus said, who left justified? The other man left justified. Why? Because he prayed the right prayer, he had the right response. The question is that, do you have the right response? Some people, they are saying they have, they have, they have challenges at their place of work, but their attitude stinks. Right attitude. Right response. Your boss will call you, say, come here, and you go, and you are, you are, you are frowning your face. Your boss will give you an assignment to do, and you don't do it, and you now say, it is witches and witches. It's not witches and witches. It's a response you give. Do you give the right response? If you can use our word of the day, do you give out the right vibe? Do you give out the right vibe to your friends, to your colleagues, at your place of work? Can people actually say that you are really, you are a born-again Christian at your place of work? Or if you say you are a Christian, <laughs> you, if you are a Christian, then I'm a better Christian than you. Because by your, at some people, their attitude stinks. Right response. The right response goes a long way. I say again, are you a storyteller? Are you a time waster? Or are you somebody that hits the nail on the head? Straight to the point person. What type of person are you? That is the question. What type of person are you? Let me tell you, people who have the wrong attitude don't go far in life. Now, if you say you meet person one, you meet person two, you meet person three, you meet person four, you meet person five, and they are all telling you or they are all turning their backs on you. Then you need to check yourself. Those five people cannot all be wrong. Even if one or two are wrong, what are the other three? All the five cannot be wrong. I repeat that. All the five cannot be wrong. So many times we need to sit down and microscope our lives. Even this man who has been sick, I don't know his attitude. The Bible did not say, but looking in between the lines, if he was a good man, if he was a nice man, at least people will have mercy on him and they will all miss. let the man go because he has been here for a long time. And the way I believe his attitude stinks. If you read verse 14, we're not up today, we're not going there. If you read verse 14, the Bible said, Jesus met him in the temple and told him, Sin no more, so that something worse may not befall you. And the next thing he did, he went to report to the Jews, someone who has been sick for 38 years. That it is just that healed him. And the Bible said the Jews hated Jesus the more because he was healing on the Sabbath day. Because that day was a Sabbath day. Can you imagine such a man who has been sick for 38 years, who has been healed and has been warned, seen no more. The next thing he went to do was to whistle on Jesus and say, it is Jesus that healed him. Is that a good attitude? Many people out there, they are blaming the devil, they are blaming forces. No, sometimes you need to check yourself. Talking about the right attitude, the right response, the right behavior, the right vibes. Many times, people give out the, the wrong vibes. And when you give, up, give out the wrong vibes, guess what? You will get the wrong vibes in return. It's not demon. It's not uh, witches or wizard. It's not anything. It is you. You need to check yourself. You need to check yourself. You need to check your attitude. Even though many people are born again, but I'm sorry to say, I'm sorry to say, I'm not telling anyone, many people, their attitude stinks. Stinks to heaven. It stinks to heaven. Many people, their attitude stinks. And they begin to wonder, uh, why is this one hating me? They hate me because of the color of my skin. They hate me because of my accent. They hate me because of the way I... No! Check your attitude. Attitude goes a long way. Attitude goes a long way. Right response. Will thou be made whole? Simple answer. Yes, I will be made whole. Yes, I want to be healed. No, but began story. Stop storytelling and begin action. Stop being a time waster and act. All the things you have been saying you're going to do, start it now. Now is the time for you to start it. Now is the time for you to make progress. Now is the time for you to move forward. Now is the time for you to act. Get, let me tell you something. Do you know that we all are not getting younger? Each year that comes and goes, we are not getting any younger. 
we are growing older and older and older and older and older. Whether we like it or not, we are growing older. What is your response? Do you have the right response? That's why we put the question mark there. Right response. What is your response? What is your response? What is your response? What Are you someone that is full of themselves? You think you know it all. You think you have it all. You think you are the best. You think you stand out. You look down on everybody around you. And if they don't take your idea, just as Aitofel, guess what? The Bible says that the advice of Aitofel was like an angel. That it was as if an angel was advising somebody. And the Bible says that David, when David had that Aitofel was with his son Absalom, he was afraid. And he began to pray that Lord, Turn the and uh, the turn the advice of Ahithophel to folly, and truly, truly, God had His prayer. Now the Bible says that when Ahithophel advised Absalom, and Absalom said, "Okay, we we'll take somebody else's advice," and they took somebody somebody else's advice, and Absalom and um, Ahithophel now realized they did not take his advice. What did the Bible say? He went to his home, put his hands in order, and hung himself, and he died. He self destruct Why? Because he was too full of himself. He thought he was the best. Nobody is the best. Jesus is the best. The right attitude in life takes you in the right direction and takes you far. That guy killed himself in the word of God, in the Bible. Why? Because he thought he was the master advisor. He thought he was the best man. He thought there was no one like him. He thought that any advice he gives anyone, they must listen, and if they don't listen, that is it. And he went to kill himself. Why? Because they did not take or follow his advice. What a, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say negative, what, what, a, what, what a person. What, what, how can somebody be such a person? You are not the best. You are not the best. Christ is the best. Anything you have is by His grace, the grace of God. So, have the right attitude. Have the right response. Have the right posture. Give out the right vibes. Let people see your vibes. I know it's a right vibe and then begin to move with you. Many a times when people, they go to work, nobody wants to sit with them and eat with them during lunch hour. They are all running away because they are full of themselves. They believe they are the best. They believe they stand out. They look down on everybody. Anyone that does that, just as I will perish. May we not perish in the name of Jesus. What am I talking about? Having the right attitude, having the right response, having the right move, having the right thought in our hearts goes a long way. If not that Jesus was merciful in this of this man, Jesus would have almost walked away because Jesus didn't have time for time with us. Look at when they called Matthew. Matthew followed me. He did not look back and Matthew followed him. Matthew did not. Matthew had the right response, and guess what? Because Matthew had the right response of following. Guess what happened? He became one of the apostles. When the Lord called Saul, that became Paul. Guess what? He had the right attitude. He obeyed. He listened, and he became one of the apostles. He became a great man of God because he had the right attitude. The right attitude always goes a long way. The question tonight is that: What type of attitude do you have? People around you, can they say confidently that you are a good person? Or will they say when they are coming, they will just do their nose like this or look down on you or ignore you or when you are talking, they are one ears in, another ears out. It depends on the attitude at your place of work, in your establishment. What type of attitude do you have there? Do people love you? Do people Can people confide in you? Talking about the right attitude. Look at when the angel brought out Lot and his wife and the children out. The Lot's wife did not have the right attitude. And she looked back and she became a pillar of stone. When people don't have the right attitude, guess what? It puts them in trouble. The question tonight is that, do you have the right response? Do you have the right attitude? Do you give out the right vibes? Are you somebody that is humble and down to earth? Or are you somebody who is proud, thinking that you are the best? I repeat again, no one is the best. You must have the right attitude. You must have the right response. Will thou be made whole? Very simple. I was supposed to answer, and he became a storyteller. He became a, he became a time waster. But Jesus, who is not a time waster, went straight to the point. We do that next week. He went straight to the point. May we not lose out. Many people have lost out, not because, you know, when you are doing an interview, you are going for a job interview, 
what are they, they are watching your attitude they are watching your posture they are watching your exclamation they are watching the way you respond to questions they are watching to see if you are get annoyed easily they are watching if you are getting carried away easily or they are watching if you are somebody that goes straight to the point they ask you what did you do, do last and taking, telling them about the last three things you did just one question what was your last experience in your last job last job last job you did and you're talking about the job, the third, the third last one, second last one, and first last one. This is a time waster. You see, all these things are pointers, are pointers, are pointers. Do you have the right response? Do you have or give her the right attitude? May God help us today in the name of Jesus to change our attitude, to change and so that you and I can have the right response. Thank you, man of God. I can see that the man of God, um, Reverend Annie from Leeds, is saying that right attitude places you in the right attitude. You see? Places you in the right, which is true, places you in the right attitude. Having the right attitude goes a long way. Some people, they need to pray, Lord, break me down, remold me, and remake me. So you can remake me to have the right attitude. It's very, very important to have. Look at Zacchaeus. He had the right attitude. He said Jesus is coming. He went on a tree and Jesus came down. And because his response was positive, so that Jesus, today, ah, I will pay back what I've owed four times. I will do this. And whoever default, I will pay back. And Jesus said, today, salvation has come to this house. All Jesus said, come down as a girl. I'm eating in your house. And the guy had the right attitude. And guess what? Because of the right attitude that they had, guess what? Salvation came to his house house that day based on his attitude attitude goes a long way may god help us in the name of Jesus. i will stop here today father we thank you we bless you we give all the praise glory honor marvelous king accept our thanks in jesus name we bless and worship you we praise and adore you mighty father we have had your word having the right response having the right attitude giving out the right vibes. Lord, give us that grace to be perfect in you. Give us that grace. My dear Father, if there's anyone out there that the attitude stinks, Lord, break that individual that break us down and remold us. My dear Father, make our attitude to give out good aroma that people will want to gather around us. People will like our, 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 our gathering, Lord. Give us that grace. Every nastiness in us, Lord, removed by fire. Every pride in us, Lord, removed by fire. Every negativity in us, Lord, removed by fire. Let your name be glorified. As from today, Holy Ghost, change us, transform us, and let us have the right attitude, right response, and give out the right vibes. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. It is well with our soul. Thank you, everybody. God will bless, increase, and prosper you. God will give us the grace. Lest I forget, please, lest I forget. If you're out there, you're not giving your life to Jesus, let's give you that now. And you want to give your life to Christ, just say this simple after me. Lord Jesus, I come before you. I'm a sinner, and I cannot save myself. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart and dwell in me. Forgive me of all my sins and cleanse with your blood. Give me your Holy Spirit to empower me and save me, Lord, from the devil. Thank you, Lord, for answering my prayers in Jesus' precious and wonderful name. If you have just said this, but guess what? You are born again. Your name has been written in that book of life. And guess what? If you don't have any church, you are going. But I'm going myself. We are inviting you to church. That's our address on the screen. Write it down Sunday at 10 a.m. Come to church and God will bless, increase, and prosper you. God will honor you. God will make you to arise and shine. And you shall succeed even greatly and mightily in the name of Jesus. Thank you for all those who have been watching. I'd like to thank um, Reverend Lani all the way from Leeds. He has a program also, Manzion Global Ministry. Uh, on Facebook every Tuesday and Thursday. Thursday is there at 6 p.m. and Mondays at 9 p.m. and also Sundays at 9 a.m. Make sure you join. Join him. He's a great man of God. You'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Everyone who has been joining, God will bless you, increase and prosper you. I thank you. I thank my dear wife, Pastor Funke, for joining, for supporting. God will bless you, my, my darling, and God will bless, increase and prosper you. Every man and woman who has joined, God will bless you. Thank you, Lord. I hear that voice now. It is over. I said, what is over, God? And God says, sorrow, tears, weeping is over. Sorrow, tears, weeping is over. Sorrows, tears, weeping is over. I hear God say, sorrow, tears, weeping is over. If that is you, just type it out. It is over. It is over. And guess what? It is over for you in the name of Jesus. And God will begin to work His wonders and miracles in every life. Quickly, before I go, I just want to give us some announcements. Don't forget that we have our online programs. 
that's our online programs every Sunday we have a couples forum at 8 a.m. 8 p.m. in the evening couples forum at 8 p.m. in the evening where we have was how, as to how we can live together in love peace and harmony and on Wednesdays we have Bible study tomorrow we have Bible study at 7 p.m. Our Bible study is interactive we are currently treating the book of Romans chapter 12 that is 9 to 21 Marks of a true Christian. Marks of a true Christian is another interactive. Join us tomorrow and God will bless, increase, and prosper you. And you know, just and my dear wife, the apostle of hell, my cry comes up every Sunday at 6 a.m. in the morning, Mondays at 11 p.m. Yesterday was very powerful, very great. Make sure you join tomorrow. She's on tomorrow at 1 p.m. Very powerful, great. I know your life shall never remain the same. And I will have prophetic hour every Tuesday, excuse me, every Tuesday at 9 p.m. and Thursdays we have breakthrough prayers. We will break our way to breakthrough, we break forth and breakthrough and join us 9 p.m. and God will bless you in Jesus' name. And don't forget also we have a special program coming up where we pray. We have a special program coming up where we pray. Pray five Fridays of prayers. Five Fridays of prayers. I put that on before I finish and God will bless everyone in the name of Jesus. And don't forget please like the our Facebook page love our facebook page and follow our facebook page very important to like it when you open our facebook page Prayer of Christ center please make sure your friends invite them let them like the page and god will bless you, you want to get the likes and the follows up and god will bless you in jesus name. and for those who are on youtube also on youtube please subscribe to our channel and also click the i didn't know that somebody told me about this click the notification button the bell Click it so that anytime we are coming on, you get notification. So make sure you do that. Not only subscribing, also click the notification button and God will bless you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. We'd like to thank everyone for joining us. God will bless. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you. I pray for all our viewers that are blessed in Jesus' name. Your name shall be glorified in their lives. I declare and decree you are moving forward. Because you have watched this program, I declare the Lord himself will beautify your life. For those who have shared, you are blessed. For those who have watched, you are blessed. For those who have made comments, you are blessed. I declare every good thing you lay your hands on will prosper, flourish, and succeed. And the name of God shall be glorified in your lives and destinies. Father, we honor and we bless you. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. It is well with your soul. So thank you very much. By the grace of God, we'll be back again tomorrow, Pastor Morgan and myself, for Bible study at um, 7 p.m. But my wife will be here in the morning, in the afternoon, 1 p.m. tomorrow, by the grace of God, for Hear My Cry and God will bless. And don't forget our special program coming up by the grace of God. Special program coming up by the grace of God. That's it. Our special program coming up by the grace of God. Um, it's five Fridays of family prayers. We did the first Friday last week by God's where we prayed for fruit of the womb. To, on this Friday coming, just for 30 minutes, 10 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Just 30 minutes, 30 minutes. Make sure you join us. We're going to pray for the married, for your marriage to remain solidified. And also for those who are not married yet, they are believing God for your partner. We're going to pray great prayers. Great prayers, great prayers, great prayers. For those who are believing God for marriage, buy something that you go to use for your marriage. It may be just powder or whatever. Just buy something that you may be just small pouch or your handkerchief. Just get something and we'll pray this Friday by the grace of God. So make sure you join us for this and God will bless you, increase you and prosper you. In the Once again, thank you everyone for joining. God will bless, increase and prosper you. We do appreciate you and you continue to arise and shine. I declare the glory of God to begin to shine on your life. I declare once again, the glory of God, God said I should say that seven times. And I, as I'm saying it, please be receiving it. The glory of God will shine on your life. If you want it, just type it out. The glory of God just once. But I'm going to say it seven times. The glory of God will shine in my life. Two, the glory of God will begin to shine on our lives. The glory of God will begin to shine on our lives. The glory of God will begin to shine on our lives. The glory of God will begin to shine on our lives. The glory of God will begin to shine on our lives. I say once again, the glory of God will begin to shine in our lives and destinies. Thank you, Lord. We bless you in Jesus' precious and wonderful name. Once again, thank you very much. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow by the grace of God and have a nice evening. God bless you. Bye-bye and bye-bye.